guys um okay so uh well where should i start first of all i'm sorry i'm sorry for not doing enough um videos um i've been really really busy and it's been summer as well and you know just going out socializing with friends um as well as some serious heavy crafting like yeah definitely a little hardcore but good um good kind of crafting that I've been doing so I'm pretty happy about that um, so yeah anyway what I wanted to speak about today um, was John Barleycorn um, it's coming up to Lammas as you guys know um, I'm basically in this video going to be talking about um, various different um, opinions I have. Um, this is my point of view, by the way. Um, I'm basically explaining a little bit about the spirit of John Barleycorn. Now, we always see in uh, folklore in Britain, you also have these cups, um, and they've basically got pictures on of men. I can't, I haven't got any cups to hand of him on, but that is also a John Barleycorn as well. So you also see that, and he stems through various different folklore throughout the British Isles. Um, I'm not going to get into too much history here. What I want to talk about is the context in modern paganism and where he stands then. Um, and kind of my sort of own personal um, experiences or beliefs or my opinions. Um, so first of all, this is going to be a here's one I made earlier um, video. But this is a John Barleycorn. Um, this was made by me and a friend. <laughs> um, basically, he is pretty cool. He's got like, yeah, he kind. He of, just looks like he's got dreads. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but basically, I wouldn't normally craft a John Barley corn like this. Um, my style is very, very rustic, almost kind of. Blair Witch chic. <laughs> um, so the way in which I operate is I try and make it look as primal as possible. Um, but I've done it with a friend who's doing this year's ritual and he's just a little bit more fabulous than me. Well, a whole load of a lot more fabulous. And basically has done hair for corn and yeah, um, gave him a penis as well because as well, not a lot, this goes, you know, this goes without... Um, Part. As well, John Barleycorn is a fertility um, spirit as well, believe it or not, and I'll explain that why in a minute. Um, but, yes, this is a John Barleycorn. Now, um, the idea behind John Barleycorn is that he represents the spirit of sacrifice. He represents the spirit that... Oh, can't keep still, can you, John? Okay. John's laid down. Um, he represents the spirit of sacrifice. He's basically every man, every human, every animal that has ever been sacrificed to the pagan gods. Um, you know, you've got to remember these were times when people would have, you know, their, their livestock would die, the animals would die, the plants and crops would perish. And so these were times where people would offer up other people to the gods. Um, and what I like about Lamas or Lugnasa is that it's, in my personal opinion, I like it the most because obviously it's my birthday, which is awesome. But what I do like about Lamas is the fact that it's a very, very, very pagan Sabbat, it's, it's one of the most pagan Sabbats I think that we have today because it is all about that aspect of sacrifice and I think in terms of paganism, sacrifice is a key role. Um, this doesn't have to be the stereotypical knife in the person on a stone altar and blur and loads of nastiness, it doesn't have to be about that. A sacrifice, as somebody said, one of my mates said, <laughs> you know, a sacrifice could be your last cigarette. I say that before I cough. I don't smoke anymore, but, you know, a sacrifice could be your last cigarette because that means a lot to you. Obviously, leave the tobacco there. Don't leave the butt there. That would be stupid. But do you know what I mean? It would be something that would mean quite a lot to you. 
Um, so, for instance, um, as you guys know, well, the majority of you know, this Lammas I'm giving, um, after working with Jack in the Green for a year, I'm giving, well, half a year, I'm giving him back to the land as John Barleycorn. So that is my sacrifice because I have such a connected relationship. Um, well, as I have had, because as the seasons are going, I'm feeling his power slowly dwindling away. Um, but I have such a close relationship with Jack, so that's something that means quite a lot to me. So I won't be able to do that again. That's, do you know what I mean? So that's not, that's going to be something I am not going to be able to experience and do at least for a good while. So I'm giving him away as a sacrifice because I love Jack. I'm giving that as a sign and an offering to the old gods. That is a sacrifice, you know, something you truly, truly love, something you cherish. That is a very big sacrifice within itself. And then, of course, we have the good old-fashioned traditional blood and guts. Um, but let's not, you know, this isn't a video to say let's go around killing people because I don't really want to do that. And neither, you know, animals. I mean, it depends how people work and stuff like that, but... What you need to remember here is that John Barleycorn is the very essence of sacrifice. He basically dies in order for the land to to give offering to the land for the harvest that we have. Without him, the harvest would not be. He is the reason behind the harvest. And this is what you should see John Barleycorn as when you work with him. Last year I had a John Barleycorn effigy and on... I think, yeah, at the beginning of July, um, I actually made this effigy and I put the spirit of John Barleycorn into this effigy um, and worked the spirit into this effigy and sealed it and worshipped the effigy for a month, for a full solid month. I gave it offerings, I gave it prayers um, and particular certain things that I wanted to happen. Um, you know, after Lammas, I gave various prayers and offerings to John Barleycorn. I worshipped him, I kissed him as a god. I, you know, I really, really gave him everything and then I sacrificed him. So that is again a sign of sacrifice. So that's just an idea, you don't have to go worship him straw man or anything like that but he is an emblem he represents the ancestors he represents the link to the ancestral world as well john barleycorn is actually quite chthonic he's actually a, a big huge psycho pump and um, he's the link between this world and the ancestors when john barleycorn dies on lammas he carries forth to the spirit world our petitions he carries forth to the spirit world our supplications, our offerings, and he carries our, do our desires that we want to happen. He will carry this through to the ancestors. He represents a mark of the first ancestors. So if you have a John Barleycorn, speak to it, worship it, honour it as a god, because he is. He is a link. He is the slain king, the corn king that you hear about in the Golden Bow. Um, and not just the Golden Bow, because it's not particularly accurate, or um, Robert Graves, the White Goddess, again, another one, it's a bit. But those two books have a huge um, impact on modern paganism. Um, and John Barleycorn is 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 um caught, you know basically mentioned more than a fair few times as the corn king as the slain king he is the king that gives up his life in order for us to get from the land okay he without him we wouldn't have our bread um without him we wouldn't have our grain we wouldn't have our corn because it's John Barleycorn that is offering up his life for us um as again that is a representation of all the ancestors. And of course, some people will say, well, we're in the modern 21st century. How can you work with John Barleycorn? Rah, rah, rah. Well, because you can also thank him for the summer. You can also thank the earth for the summer and give him as an offering to the earth. So you're giving back to the earth. You are giving back the thank you for everything, you know, thank you for the amazing summer, thank you for the great friends that I've met, thank you for my family being well, thank you. So it doesn't just have to be in agricultural terms, it, it can be in, in a, a spiritual way, it can be in an emotional way, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. On a witchcraft level, as I was saying before, he carries forth petitions and prayers. On a pagan level, 
this is a very big emblem of sacrifice. Um, as I said, I'd, I wouldn't normally do like this. Um, the thing about the fertility as well, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> cheeky. Um, <laughs> no, the thing about the fertility here as well is the fact that John Barleycorn gives to the land. Without his sacrifice, the land and crops wouldn't grow. So he is an emblem of fertility. That's what explains the large phallus, because he is that emblem of fertility, is that emblem of of produce. Without his sacrifice and his life into the earth, it wouldn't grow. So yeah, um, I'm going to read a passage from a book, um, and this book is called The Witching Way of the Hollow Hill by Robin Artisan. Now, I have, I'll be honest, he is not my favourite author, he's not particularly um, an author that I look up to or anything like that, um, although I feel in this book he has a very good and amazing input um, in Lamas. I do, I feel is the way in which he goes on about it, I find this really well. well the Phantom of the Slang. Ancient people needed to contact the other side. They needed the wisdom of the underworld. They needed some way to make important changes in their environment and their lives. They needed crops to grow. They needed plagues to end. They needed food and animals. They needed guidance. The cult of sacrificed humans, as well as the venerated dead, is based on this. The sacrificed human, laid in the sacred mound, went to merge with the great dark underworld and to merge with fate itself and his or her name was invoked and prayed to at the mound for needful change. For now, fate and the mound dead, or the mound king, or the lady under the mound, were one. They were the same. To invoke him was to bring about what must happen. So this says basically in this book that John Barleycorn was a, given as a link to the ancestors is it's the idea that he is a psychopump that he connects this world to the spiritual world and that's the idea behind John Barleycorn. Now <clears throat> in history we could go on and on and on there are various things in history and um, folklore and, and various different um, references but what I wanted to talk about really was the idea of him being who he is in modern paganism and what effects that has on some modern pagans. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's a very personal thing this, this year because he does represent um, Jack in the Green. He represents the Green Man coming to an end. Some people will also see um, him as, in Imolk, you get the Green George, the um, Green Man of Spring. At Beltane, we get the Jack in the Green. At the Summer Solstice, we have the Green Man very matured, and at uh, Lammas we have John Barleycorn, the spirit of the slain king. So we have this vegetation god that dies and then is sacrificed to give back to the land. And that's the idea what I'm doing this, this year. So for me it's quite a big thing, because it means that I don't get to work with Jack for a long time. Um, although that period has actually stopped um, without me wanting to do so, it's just kind of the way that he's started to feel, he's stopped being the green man, I feel that he's become this entity that is very sacrificial, um, this entity that basically we need to give back to the earth and thank him for, and you know, <clears throat> that's what sacrifice is about to me, the real meaning of sacrifice, I can go on and on and on, but it's about giving what you love the most to the spirits or to the gods. Um, and not just about, you know, in, in, in normal life we sacrifice things that we like for people. For instance, if, if you have a work colleague who you really, really like, but there's a really, there's a day that's happening that you are, <clears throat> you know, looking forward to and you've booked that day off of work and that work colleague has some really bad unfortunate news, but you really like them. Um, and they need a day off, but you really, really like them. You were looking forward to your day off, but, you know, you get what I mean, and you sacrifice that day off. You say, no, I will cover your shift for you because I like you, or for a partner, for a spouse. It, it can go on and on and on. We sacrifice a lot of things we like for a spouse. For instance, a good evening in with friends. Um, if you feel like, well, actually, maybe 
I, I know I will really enjoy that, but I actually have my partner and my spouse and they want to do things, you know, we haven't spent enough time together, so forth. These are just mundane examples of sacrifice. So it doesn't have to be spiritual, but in terms of John Barleycorn, it's totally spiritual. It represents that sacrifice. It represents our devotion and our honour to the old gods of the land. So yeah, um, I just wanted to do this video. Um, on John Barley corn. If you want to make a John Barley corn, there are plenty of um, things up on the internet how to make a John Barley corn. Um, I mean, with us, we just sort of, Jesus Christ, I don't know what we've done. Um, <laughs> it looks, I mean, it's, it's cool, but it, it's, it's not how I would do it, but it's cool, you know, and, and it will definitely work. Um, so, yeah, um, I just want to sort of wanted to say that about John Barley corn. Um, and this little blog. So wherever you got, wherever you guys are, whatever you do, have an amazing Lammas. Um, if you're in the, you know, if you're in Australia or down under, have an amazing Imolk. Um, and I will speak to you guys soon. Mwah. Take care.